فلقد يسرنا القرآن للذكر فهل من مدكر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله we start for the منافقون today thank you Allah to make it and make it easy for us in our understanding implementation and we pray to Allah to make us or to enable us to understand this surah in the right perspective and one of the messages that we are going to derive out of it may Allah help us to understand it in order that we may reform our lives in accordance to it we pray to Allah to make it easy for us Ameen Ya Rabbul Alameen أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا جاءك المنافقون قالوا نشهد إنك لرسول الله والله يعلم إنك لرسوله والله يشهد إن المنافقين لكاذبون اتخذوا أيمانهم جنة فصدوا عن سبيل الله إنهم ساء ما كانوا يأمنون ذلك بأنهم آمنوا ثم كفروا فتبيع على قلوبهم فهم لا يفقهون In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. When come to you, the hypocrites, they say. When come to you, the hypocrites, they say. We bear witness verily, you surely are the messenger of Allah. And Allah knows verily, you are surely his messenger. And Allah bears witness verily, the hypocrites surely are liars. They have taken their oaths. As a shield, then they hinder from the way of Allah. Verily, really evil is what they used to do. That is because they believed summa kafaro, then disbelieved fatubi ala khulubim, then was set a seal upon their hearts, so they do not understand. Allah ke naam se jo beintiya mehrban ko brahm farmane wala jab aaye apke pas munafik ko kete hain, jab aate hain apke pas munafik ko kete hain, ham gawahi dete hain becha ka bala ke rasool. اور اللہ جانتا ہے بے شک اللہ کے رسول ہیں اور اللہ گواہی یہ بھی دیتا ہے کہ بے شک منافعین ضرور جھوٹے ہیں انہوں نے بنا لیا اپنے خصموں کو ڈھال پھر وہ روکتے ہیں اللہ کے راستے سے بے شک بہت برا ہے جو عمل کرتے ہیں یہ اس لیے کہ انہوں ایمان لے آئے پھر انہوں نے کفر کیا پھر مہر لگا دی گئی ان کے دلوں پر بس وہ نہیں سمجھ بوجھ رکھتے وی ہیو بین اسٹارٹنگ on the subject of hypocrites in many places in the Quran. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had start, started speaking about the qualities of the hypocrites right in the beginning of Surah Bakhra itself. Almost from the verse number 8, the subject of hypocrite began. And they also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions different, different qualities of the hypocrites. Primarily, the qualities of the hypocrites are four which the Prophet said. Prophet said, they are four significant qualities of a hypocrite. Whenever he speaks, he will speak lies. Whenever he speaks, he will speak lies. Number two, he, whenever he makes a promise, he will break it. جب بھی منہ کھلے جھوٹ بولے گا جب وہ وعدہ کرے تو وعدہ خلاف ہی کرے گا اینڈ وین ہی از انٹرسٹیڈ وتھ سم امانا وتھ سم ٹرسٹ دین ہی ول بی ٹریٹ جب اس کے پاس کوئی امانت سپرد کی جاتی ہے تو وہ امانت میں خیانت کرتا ہے اینڈ دا فورتھ از دیٹ وین ہی گیٹس ان ٹو اینی آرگومنٹس ہی یوز از ایبیوزو لینگویج جب وہ بحث و مباحثے میں اتر آتا ہے تو بد زبانی کرتا ہے تو اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی یہ مینشن سرٹن کوالٹیز پروفٹ مینشن سرٹن کوالٹیز اینڈ پروفٹ سیٹ دیٹ اف یو ہیو ایون ون آف دیز کوالٹیز ابینڈن اٹ امیڈیٹلی لیس اٹ می ڈسٹرائی یو اینڈ ہو ہیز آل دا فور کوالٹیز از آؤٹ اینڈ آؤٹ اینڈ ہیپوکریٹ ان دی آئیز آف اللہ There are several other qualities which Allah has mentioned in Surah Nisa, where Allah says, Innal munafiqina minad darki asfala minad nar. 
the hypocrites will be in the lowest depths of the fire. Inna minafikna fi darkali asfala min al nar. Will be in the lowest depths of the fire. सबसे निचले दर्जे जहन्नम में यानी सबसे बदतरीन सजा जिसको दी जाएगी वो मुनाफिकों को दी जाएगी इधर खामो इलाती खामो कुशाला वेन एवर दे स्टैंड फॉर प्रेयर स्टैंड विद लेजीनेस लाइस कोरोना इला खलीला दे नॉट रिमेंबर अल्लाह एक्सेप्ट लिटल दे विल क्रिएट डिसूनिटी इन दियो मा they will speak against islam against the muslims they will connive and they will be hand in glove with the disbelievers for material gain dushmana ne islam ke sath kuffar ke sath inka utbet aur unke sath gehri dosti rahegi isliye ke unhone islam ka sauda kar chuke they have bartered away their faith for a paltry gain and they're always materialistic in nature worldly loving madda parast duniyadari har cheez ko paison ke sath tolenge har mamle ko where there is fun where there is pleasure where there is comfort where there is luxury where there are rich people where they are the affluent class where they will get a lot of benefit they will always be there whatever there is a risk factor whatever there are challenges wherever there is issues they will give some excuse speak lies and disappear wo wahan par hain kich nahi jahan jaan ka khatra hai mali qurbaniyan ka mutaliba kiya ja raha hai aur bahut se challenges aur issues hain risk factors involved hain ये बुजदिल होते हैं बुजदिल आउट एंड नॉट कवर्ड्स एंड मेनी मोर सच क्वालिटीज ऑफ हिपोक्रेट यू स्टडी अल्लाह सुबहान टू देंट है कंप्लीट सोरा कॉल मुनाफिक ऑन हिपोक्रेट इट सेल्फ एंड हाउ डज वन बिकम अपोक्रेट ओनली आफ्टर एक्सेप्टिंग इस्लाम The one who has rejected Islam is called a kafir. He is far better than a hypocrite. जिसने इस्लाम को रद्द कर दिया, इनकार कर दिया, उसको तो हम क्या बुलाते हैं? काफिर. और वो काफिर कहीं दर्जे बेहतर हैं मुनाफिकों से जो इस्लाम कबूल करके इस्लाम के अंदर गद्दारी करते हैं और कुफर के काम करते हैं इस्लाम के अंदर दाखिल हो जाने के बाद. They commit acts of kufr after entering into the fold of Islam. and they can disappoint you very badly they can let you down at crucial times and whenever some responsibility is given to them they will betray it koi zimedari di jati hai unko badi khushi khushi se le lenge baad mein aapko jo hai aisa aapko disappoint karenge iski koi intiya nahi bade dangerous hote hain ye log aur inko handle karna ek bahut bada challenge hai Khas tar pur in Islamic movement, and even the case of the Prophet saw some during his time. One of the biggest challenges that he faced was from within, that is, from the hypocrites, because they were the one who used to leak information to the disbelievers, to the mushrikeen of Makkah, to the Jews, and they were instrumental in creating many a disorder, many a conflict, and they were hand in glove with them, they connived with them, and they committed acts of kufr. while staying inside the fold of islam that was the biggest danger from them is you can never know when what is going to happen because they are part and parcel of your community and therefore they can do anything that will cause tremendous damage to the fair name of islam and to the muslim community itself and the ring leader of the hypocrite during the time of the prophet was abdullah bin ubay he was the man we know Who at the battle after the, in the during the battle of Ohad, just at the eleventh hour, what did he do? He withdrew three hundred of his people from the army of the Prophet. Three hundred of his people from the army of the Prophet. Three hundred of his people from the army of the Prophet. Three hundred of his people from the army of the Prophet. Three hundred of his people from the army of the Prophet. Three hundred of his people from the army of the Prophet. 
हजार की तेदाद होती है तीन सौ निकलने से सात सौ बचते हैं गद्दारी की इंतहा इफ यू कॉन टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस हिपोक्रिट्स देर नो एंड टू इट द एंड ऑफ द डे वी हैव टू सी वेदर वी हैव एनी एलिमेंट ऑफ हिपोक्रेसी इन आर हार्ट डू वी ऑल्सो स्पीक लाइज डू वी ऑल्सो ब्रेक प्रोमिसेस do we also betray the trust that is given to us do we also be materialistic are we also worldly loving or do we also have intense and passionate love for wealth do we also look only for luxuries and comforts in life and not prepared to take risks and challenges in the path of islam so all these are some of the qualities that we need to relate to our lives as well and not just say okay at during the time of the protest used to happen this person you did this yeah this person did that that person did that but how do i relate that to my life today that is why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says udkhulu fi silmi kafa into the, to enter into the fold of islam completely don't be a cat on a wall don't keep oscillating from one end to the other and from islam to kufr kufr to islam if you do this what will allah do fa tubi ala qulubihim allah will seal your hearts अल्लाह तुम्हारे दिलों पर मोहन लगा देगा फिर नो नेकी नो गुड एडवाइस नाउ नॉन ऑफ द टीचिंग ऑफ इस्लाम विल मेक एनी इम्पैक्ट इन यू बिकॉज योर हार्ट बिकम हार्ड तुम्हारे दिल सख्त हो जाएंगे फिर हिदायत तुम्हारे दिलों में नहीं उतरेगी और हिदायत की कोई बात या नसीहत तुम्हारे पर कारगर नहीं होगी इसलिए कि तुम्हारे दिल सख्त हो गए तुम जो है रिपीटेडली और बार बार जो है कुफर के अमल करते 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 तुम्हारा दिल सिया हो गए हो जाएगा यो हार्ट्स विल बिकम ब्लैक एंड बिकम हार्ड एंड आफ्टर दैट नथिंग गुड विल एवर बी एबल टू एंटर इनटू इट सो दिस अब्दुल्ला बिन उबई ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ द प्रॉफिट सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम इट वाज हिज रूटीन फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट हु इज दिस मैन ही इज सपोज्ड टू बी द लीडर ऑफ द मदीनाइट्स एंड ही वाज सपोज्ड टू बी क्राउंड एज द किंग ऑफ मदीना He is supposed to be crowned as the king of Medina. Just at the time when he was supposed to be crowned as the king of Medina, the emigration of the Prophet takes place. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's hijrat ka waqiya pesh aata hai. Ab Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has done hijrat from Makkah and not gone away to Medina. Now the entire tide now shifts towards Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this man is boiling with rage. because all his dreams of becoming a king of madina were all shattered uska jo khwab tha ki wo madina ka badshah hoga pura ikhtidar madina ka uske haath mein hoga ye iski uska khwab titar bitar ho gaya jo hi allah ke rasul madina ko aaye to sab ki tawajjuh rasul akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam ki taraf ho gayi aur ye bechare ko jo hai uska ek recognition aur uska jo position tha wo pura jo hai malya meet hoga to ye usse se ubal raha tha and he was raging with anger and the jealousy and he was became in the heart of hearts a staunch enemy of the prophet to go against step forward he started hating islam itself he had a tremendous grudge against islam and he could not digest any success from the muslim community and from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he could not digest so his agenda the agenda of the jewish tribes in madina and the mushrikeen of makkah were one and the same but he had no choice now when he saw the entire tide turning towards the prophet and all the attention was you know he had no choice in order to survive out of compulsion he accepted islam naam ke waste ab wo islam ke andar ko kyun isko maan lo अब इस्लाम का बोल बाला होगा इस्लाम को कामयाबी मिलने वाली है रसूल सुसम आ चुके हैं और सबकी तवज्जो उधर चले गई है अभी अगर ओपनली अपोज करेगा तो ही विल बी टोटली आइसोलेटेड एंड ऑल दैट लिटिल व्हाट इज हैविंग आल्सो दैट पोजीशन विल ऑल गेट लॉस्ट ही नो ही न्यू दैट वेरी वेल थोड़ा भी जो उसकी अहमियत थी वो भी खत्म हो जाएगी और उसको पूछने वाला कोई नहीं होगा तो मजबूरी से वो इस्लाम के अंदर दाखिल हो गए लेकिन अंदर से उसका दिल जल रहा था खून पक रहा था 
हसद दिल में इतनी थी कि कैसे भी इस्लाम को शिकस्त हो और रसूल रसोलम और साहबा को तकलीफें आए वगैरह वगैरह तो वॉट ही यूज टू डू इज नो सिंस ही सपोज टू बी अ वेरी इंफ्लुएंशियल मैन इन मदीना एंड सपोज टू बिकम द किंग सो पीपल न्यू हेम वेरी पॉपुलर फिगर वेरी हैंडसम पर्सनैलिटी ऑल्सो वेरी इंटेलिजेंट फेलो आई लॉर्ड ऑफ वेल्थ टू his personality his wealth his way of speaking oratorical power excellent so it used to be his routine that when all the prophets also will begin this friday ceremony and he get on to the member just before he begins he this fellow will make an announcement oh audience so oh, the people here were gathered in this for this juma salah i bear witness and we all bear witness that this is the messenger of allah and we need to pay attention to what he is saying he is a blessing from allah to all of us he is coming to madina is a big gift for all of us this few sentences he will make it a routine to say every friday har jume ko ye elan karega oh ye allah ke rasool hain inki baat tawajjuh se suno inka jo hai madina mein aana hamare liye ek bahut badi saadat ka mamla hai aur ye hamare liye tohfa hai wagaira wagaira he give a speech and this used to happen the sahabas never felt comfortable the way he was because they knew this fellow had lot of grudge against islam but he is purposely trying to make a drama but they had no choice they had to digest this fellow and tolerate him digest his uh, evil activities and tolerate him they had no choice but on one occasion it so happened that after the battle of uhud when he took away the 300 and demoralized the complete army of the believers on the subsequent friday when the prophet was about to get onto the member he wanted to do the same thing what he has been doing every friday so he once again stood up and said nashadu la inna ka la rasul that's la rasulullah we bear witness that the he is the messenger of allah etc so he got up to say this one companion of the prophet pulled his collar and said you sit down you sit down you are not entitled to say this any more you are a hypocrite you demoralized the army the muslim army and now you are talking about the prophet tujhe ye layak nahi hai ki tu jo hai allah ke rasul ki khushamdi kare ya fir tu jo hai kehne ke liye tujhe ye haq nahi mil haq nahi banta tu baith ja he pulled his shirt and tried to pull him down he felt humiliated and disgraced in the entire gathering what did he do he immediately reacted and started jumping on the shoulders of all the people and walked out of the masjid why i am telling you all this because these verses are related to that without knowing the backdrop you not understand these verses so can you bear with me when he was coming outside the entrance of the masjid some ansari sahabis were there they said what happened why are you hey sir i said let this happen and i wanted to i always say this and i uh, i spoke uh, good about the prophet but some fellow when some people somebody pulled me humiliated me you know i said see for all the mischief that you have been doing we have been tolerating now you of course you had no right to say all this the best thing for you is to seek pardon and forgiveness from allah and go to the prophet and seek his pardon and forgiveness as well he is nothing doing i will not go and ask pardon or forgiveness from the prophet or seek pardon from allah and he walked out on the backdrop of those particular incident allah subhanahu wa taala sends down these verses and says allah says oh these hypocrites they are coming to your prophet and saying you are the messenger of allah who are they to say this allah himself is certifying that you are a messenger of allah what value does it add for them to say it in fact they are not entitled they are all full of liars innahum lakazibun really they are all liars they are jhoote hain inke makkar hain ye fareeb hain ये गद्दार हैं ये बुजदिल हैं ये मादा परस्त हैं ये झूठे हैं ये दगाबाज हैं एंड दे हैव टेकन देयर ओथ्स एज अ शील्ड दे स्पीक लाइज ऑन अकाउंट ऑफ दैट दे कॉजिंग डैमेज टू द नेम ऑफ इस्लाम सदन सबील अल्लाह बहुत बुरा है जो अमल करते हैं एंड देन Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says they've been oscillating from iman to kufr, kufr to iman. Finally, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has set a seal on their hearts 
these fellows will never be able to come to the straight path. As we proceed further, details will come. Kindly follow them carefully. Waiza raeta hum tu jib ka ajzamu hum. Wain yakulo tasma ne khali hum. Ka anna hum khushubu musannada. Yaha sabu na kulla sayyat na lehim. Humul adu fahazar hum. Khatala humulla anna yufakur. And when you see them, see whom, when you see these hypocrites, will attract you their personalities. At some moment, their bodies need their personalities. And if they speak, you will keep listening to their speeches. And if they speak, you will continue to listen to their speeches. Kanam Khushubu Musanada, as if they were blocks of timber propped up, or blocks of wood propped up. They consider every shout to be alayhim against them. Humul adu, they are your enemies. Fahazarhum, so beware of them. Khatalahum Allah, may destroy them Allah. Anna yufakun, how they are getting deluded every day. And when you see them, you will feel good in their life. And if they कुछ कहना शुरू कर दे तो तुम सेंस सुनते रह जाओगे उनकी बातों को गोया के वो लकड़ियां के कुंदे हैं जो दीवार से लगाए हुए हैं वो समझते हैं हर आवाज को उनके खिलाफ वो तो तुम्हारे दुश्मन हैं उनसे आगा रहो बर्बाद करें उनको अल्लाह अन्ना युफकुन कैसे वो भेके चले जा रहे हैं अल्लाह that you will think there cannot be anybody more sincere than them in Islam or among the Muslims. But Allah says they are all like blocks of wood propped up, means stacked against the wall. These are the trees that are standing on the wall. They are not going to be any benefit. In fact, they are a burden. They, not, they cannot be used. At the same time, they cannot be thrown also. <coughs> یا نہ مسلمانوں کے لئے اسلام کے لئے فائدہ ہے نہ ان کو باہر پھینکا جا سکتا یا آستین کے سام پھینک گیا کہ آپ کو جو ٹالریٹ کرنے کے سوات دوسرا چارہ بھی نہیں یہ تو لیکن تمہارے دشمن ہیں اللہ فرمکتا ہے یہ انیمیز they have no value in fact they are a liability but they neither can be destroyed and neither can they be tolerated or trusted اللہ انہی should destroy them خاتل ہم اللہ وَإِذَا خِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْ يَسْتَقْفِرْ لَكُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ لَوَوْ تُعُسَهُمْ وَرَعَيْتَهُمْ يَسُدُّونَ هُمْ وَهُمْ مُسْتَدْبِرُونَ And when it is said to them, come, we'll seek forgiveness for you, the messenger of Allah, لَوَوْ رُوسَهُمْ They will shake their heads and you see them turning away while they are arrogant. اور جب کہا جاتا ہے ان سے آؤ بخشش طلب کرے تم سے تمہارا اللہ کا رسول بخشش طلب کرے گا تم سے اللہ کا رسول تمہارے لئے اللہ کا رسول وہ جھٹکتے ہوئے اپنے سروں کو جاتے ہیں اور تم دیکھتے ہو ان کو رک جاتے ہیں تکبور کرتے ہوئے That's what I said when he was said Okay, why don't you go and seek forgiveness from Allah I am from forgiveness from the Prophet There is nothing doing This is all he said And he became arrogant سَوَاهُنْ عَلَيْهِمْ أَسْتَغْفَرْتَ لَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تَسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُ لَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَعْدِ الْخَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ Same upon them whether you seek forgiveness for them or not you seek forgiveness for them, Allah will never forgive them. Well, Allah does not get the people who are defiantly disobedient. برابر ہیں ان کے لئے خواہ تم نے ان کے لئے مغفرت چاہو یا نہ تم ان کے لئے مغفرت چاہو ہرگز نہیں بخشے گا ان کو اللہ بے شک اللہ نہیں ہدایت دیتا نافرمان لوگوں کو so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Prophet said, whether you seek forgiveness for them or not you seek forgiveness for them, Allah said in Surah Tawbah, even if you seek forgiveness for them 70 times, Allah will never forgive these fellows. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shut the doors of guidance for these defiantly disobedient people. Humul ladhina yakhuluna la tunfiqo ala man inda rasulillah hatta yanfaddu walillahi khuzainu samawati wa lati wa lakinna al-munafiqina لا يفقهون 
today also you will find many of them there today there was on whatsapp message came uh, the morana with his pagadi and long beard the chupa and uh, sitting on uh, among the function today morning what took place in ayodhya with the rss chiefs and the priests and the important people there like that you have a lot of you also to come across many such people there who keep a very close connection with the enemies of islam who connive with them who secret who send out leak secret information of the muslims to them who who work as their agents just for what some monetary gain you pay them double the amount they'll come to your side they pay that triple the amount they'll go to their side they are all agents of shaitan agents of the enemies of islam may allah protect all of us <clears throat> humul ladina yaquluna they are those who say who are those who say these hypocrites are those who say do not spend upon those who are near the messenger of allah hatta yanfaddu until they disperse and for allah only belongs the treasures of the heavens and the earth and but the hypocrites not they understand ye wohi log hain jo kehte hain na tum kharch karo un par jo allah ke rasul ke kareeb hain yahan tak ke wo muntashir ho jaye और अल्लाह ही के लिए खजाने आसमान और जमीन के लेकिन मुनाफिक नहीं वो समझ बूझ रखते हैं azal <clears throat> while for allah only belongs honor and for his messenger and for the believers and but the hypocrites do not know wo kehte hain zarur agar hum laute hain madine ko to zarur bahar nikalwa denge wahan ke izzat wale wahan ke zalim logon ko wahan se zalim logon ko halanki allah hi ke liye hai izzat और उसके रसूल और ईमान वालों के लिए लेकिन मुनाफिक नहीं वो जानते and then the muhajir started calling o oh, muhajirin ansar the ansari sahab be calling o oh, ansar so there was a group of muhajirin and a group of ansar who had gathered there and that scuffle escalated abdullah bin ubay you know mr salaf he addresses the ansar and tells them you fellows deserve this You fellows, deserve this. You are the ones who entertained these muhajirin, isn't it? And gave them space, helped them, and brought them to this level where today they are fighting against you and want to take away your rights. And he spoke abusive language. I don't want to even say that. and he went on to say you ansar are the honorable people you should drive these fellows out you should not spend on them any more and once you stop your monetary help to them they will automatically disperse away and they will not stay in madina itself they'll go away stop helping them stop encouraging them stop entertaining them and start being supporters to them and when you return to madina drive out these fellows this is what abdullah bin ubay said and he wanted to complicate the matter until the prophet had to intervene and settle right the issue and said oh this is a call of jahiliya you people still are in the state of jahiliya for heaven's sake fear allah and prophet sallam sorted out that matter and the scuffle that took place <clears throat> was sorted out 
But these abusive language and statements which Abdullah bin Ubay made, Zaid bin Arkham, who, a little boy at that time, heard all this and even and told the Prophet, so see, Prophet, this is the abusive language Abdullah bin Ubay has said that the honorable of his people, meaning to say the Ansar, should drive out the Muhajirin from there. And uh, nothing, no money should be given to them, etc. It's all this he has spoken. Prophet Sassam called Abdullah bin Ubay and said, did you ever say, it? obviously he speak lies. He said, no, no, I didn't say all this. You're listening to this small fellow. You have more faith in him than me. And he had his group of people who started, you know, finding fault with the, that small boy, Zaid bin Arshul, like as though he was instigating some mischief against Abdullah bin Ubay when he actually spoke the truth and came into the The Prophet knew it very well. So Abdullah bin Ubay has definitely said it and he's speaking lies. And Zaid bin Arkham would never speak a lie. And Prophet knew that very well until Allah himself sent down these verses and said, yes, what Zaid bin Arkham said is absolutely the truth. Yes. He stands vindicated and his statement yeah. is absolutely true. <clears throat> He stands vindicated and uh, to add this uh, particular issue was that Umar became so upset with this uh, Abdullah bin Obay that uh, he told the Prophet Sassam, if you give me permission, I'll finish off this fellow right away. Prophet Sassam said, no. What will the people say that Muhammad is killing his own people? No, don't do that. And listen to this. Abdullah bin Ubay's son was a true believer. His name was also Abdullah. So he came to the Prophet and said, Oh Prophet, I came to know that my father has said like this. But uh, if you want to get him killed, I don't mind. Though I don't like to see the killer in front of me. And he immediately went and stood at the entrance of Medina. And the people were returning from the expedition. When, when his father, Abdullah bin Ubay, was also going to enter, he stopped him. He had a sword in his hand. Who had a sword in his hand? Abdullah bin Ubay's son, Abdullah, had a sword in his hand. And he stopped his father and said, no, you can't get inside. You are the one who said that the honorable will drive out the meanest. You are the meanest. Prophet and the sahabas are the honorable. So they're driving you out. I will not allow you to enter into the city of Medina until the Prophet gives permission. Now the matter came to the Prophet like his son himself has stopped him and not allowing him to come inside. He is pleading and requesting Prophet Sallallahu then told Abdullah, no, you don't do that. Allow him to come inside. So Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says, who are these fellows who say do not spend on these ansar? Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala holds the treasures of the heavens and the earth. He will provide to whomever he wants in whatever extent, whatever extent he wants. Who are these people? And Allah decides to give somebody, nobody in the world can stop. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to deprive somebody, nobody in the world can provide for that person. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, la tulhikum amwalukum wa la auladukum an zikri Allah wa man yafal zalika fa ulaika wa man khasirun. No, Allah is addressing the believers. After talking all about these hypocrites, because I said, a hypocrite can only be a person who after entering the fold of Islam commits acts of kufr and all those acts and practices which I explained to you. But by and large, most of them. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving that. Direct address to the true believers and saying, O oh, those who believe, let not divert you, your wealth, and neither your children from the remembrance of Allah. And whoever does that, then those they are the khasirun, the losers. Those who believe, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, be careful, O believers. Your properties, your wealth, your business, your work, and all those things, your worldly activities, and your children or your families should not be a hindrance and a hurdle and an obstacle for you to practice Islam. Tumare karobar, tumare mal, tumare jayadat, tumare kaam kaj, tumari dunya ki tamam jo hai masroofate, aur tumare families, tumari aulat, 
اللہ کی راہ میں اللہ کی یاد سے تمہیں غافل نہ کرے which includes salah which includes the work of dawah which includes the work of studying the quran including the work of conveying the message of the quran before the people etc 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 all those good deeds in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's remembrance is there helping the poor etc etc allah says your wealth and your children should not be a hurdle for you or an obstacle for you and should not divert your attention from the remembrance of whoever does that allah says gone and you will end up as losers There will be nobody to come to your rescue. Neither your wealth nor your children will be able to come to your rescue. Neither in the grave nor on the day of Qiyam. وَأَنفِقُمْ مِمَّا رَضَخْنَاكُمْ مِنْ خَبْلِ عَيَّاتِ عَهْدَكُمُ الْمَوْتُ فَيَقُولَ رَبِّي لَوْلَا أَخْرْتَنِي لَا أَجَلٍ خَرِيبٍ فَاسْوَدَّخَ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ السَّالِمِ But that doesn't mean that we should become one-sided as well. We should strike a balance as the Prophet has taught us. Yes, work also has to be given important because you have to earn your livelihood in halal way. You have to take care of your children, groom them well, give them good education, make them God-fearing children so that they become a sabkhe jari of you and invest. And the money that you're earning in a halal way, on the business and all that, spend in charity because you cannot give charity if you don't earn. And you cannot earn in a haram and feed your family as well. So that should be a perfect balance. But every time, getting totally involved in them itself, that you stay away from the work of Allah, from the remembrance of Allah, from contributing for the cause of Islam, that's absolutely dangerous. You'll know where to draw the line. You'll have to know where to draw the line. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala farmada, be careful. Otherwise you'll end up as losers. And spend from what we provided you from before that comes to any of your death. Then he says, Rabbi lawla akhartani ila jalan kharib. My Lord, why not you give me respite until a turn, until a term near. Fast saddaqa, then I will give charity and become among the salihin righteous. اور خرچ کرو اس میں جو ہم نے رزق دیا تم کو اس سے پہلے کہ آئے تم میں سے کسی کو موت پھر وہ اس وقت کہے میرا رب کیوں نہیں تو مجھے مہلت دیتا ہے ایک خرید کے وقت تک تاکہ میں صدقہ کر دوں اور ہو جاؤں صالحین میں سے ول دا ٹائم بی گیون ڈیفینیٹلی ناٹ ونس دا ٹائم ہیز کم دی اینجلس آف ڈیتھ ہیو کم ٹو ٹیک اوے یور سولس دین ایٹ دیٹ ٹائم پوائنٹ آف ٹائم جو ہے آدمی گھگائے گا منائے گا اور التجا کرے گا تھوڑی سی مہلت دے تو میں کچھ پیسہ صدقہ اور خیرات کرنا چاہتا ہوں Time will not be given. Give me a little time. I like to give away something as charity. Will that time be given? No. The angels will say, no, your time up. Whatever time and opportunity was given to you or during your lifetime when you were and healthy and you live, you hope to live for a long life, at that point of time, whatever you give, that is only is what will come to your rescue. Now the time is up. You can't give anything now. At that point of time, it doesn't say, give me time. I want to read Dorakat Nafil. I want to do something. No. We'll talk about charity, so how important charity is and that how much we should be involved in charitable work during our lifetime. May Allah SWT enable us to do the most difficult, most difficult. You ask somebody to read 12 rakats of Nafil every day, he doesn't mind. But ask him to give a few hundreds every day, not possible. Not possible. But at the same time, Allah has given a lot of rewards in charity than even the Nafil Salah. May Allah enable us to do so. Ameen. وَلَنْ يُوَقِّرَ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهَا وَاللَّهُ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَرُونَ And never shall give respite Allah to any person or any soul when has come its term. And Allah is all aware of what you do. ہرگز نہیں محلت دے گا اللہ کسی انسان کو جب وہ آ جائے اس کا وقت. اللہ خوب خبر رکھتا ہے اس پر جو تم عمل کرتے ہو. Anyhow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let him help us understand these verses in the right perspective, help us to study the language of the Quran and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eliminate any element of hypocrisy in our lives And may Allah include us among the list of the true believers whom Allah will give the best rewards in this world and in the year after. Inshallah, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow in another powerful surah Kanan Nuts with Taqabun. Can you do your homework, be on time, be regular. Jazakallahu khair. Subhanallahi bihamdi is banakallahu wa bihamdi kanashadu Allah ta'ilanta. Nastaghfirullah wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.